4 damage to the face should not be the worst, and we have good traits except this. If he tries to buff it... Oh, hi. It has more abilities than one? Hello everyone, it's Love here, and today a super cool control deck, because this will be a Zorius control with Teferi and Celestus, one of my favorite archetypes, because you are very resistant to burn spells, thanks to the life gain from those cards, and it gives you a lot of control and much more mana than you'd expect from this combination. So, uh, we are in new standard. <laughs> There will be some jokes about it, so I hope you will enjoy them. Tell me what you think in the comments when you see the games, because uh, there will be a pattern there. You will see it very quickly. Uh, so what the idea was for the deck today? Uh, there are no invokes, and you might have noticed, you might have not, but when you check my videos with control decks, we usually were running around three to five counter spells in the whole deck. And the reason was invoke the spell. I wanted to make sure that against those four cards in the deck, I have the answer because it's high, high impact card. As you know, that's why it was banned. And Right now we don't have to do it. So I went down to two counter spells uh, and now we can fight aggro much better. We have four airspell smites, uh, double march, double faithful absence, wedding announcement, which is the card they absolutely hate. Like, believe me. We have emperor that absolutely destroys aggro, depopulates, sunforce, farewells. Uh, on the card though, it's actually super cool because we as a premium blue deck have advantage over other decks to draw cards. I know, it's crazy. With Bangbuster gone, we actually can win against decks because they don't have card draw, because they don't play blue. And I, I, this is honestly an extremely good thing, because blue decks suddenly get an edge over other colors. We can draw cards, that's the whole point. And we have first for discovery, by being a Zorius, we have enough basics to make it work. There's no Eganjo Tawara for this reason. If you miss basics for, for this card, you can always cut some of the, you know, dual lands. For me, it worked, and I think it's a good balance for, you know, fixing your mana and also getting a good discard basic for first for discovery. And yeah, for the end game, we have a very simple plan. We hit five mana, we play the fairy that absolutely takes over the game. And if the game goes even longer, we have this one premium double shielded you know, the look Sanctuary Warden to just absolutely destroy those decks. Uh, one warning, uh, Mono Red seems to be running this I Steal Your Creature for one turn card. Uh, it, it seems new, but uh, like they didn't play. The card is, of course, not new, but uh, they just didn't play the strategy. So you need to be careful, uh, depending on how much this that version will be used. And uh, maybe it's better to fit a fur to furry because it cannot be stolen. But we will see. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Tell me what you think about New Standard. Like, uh, you will see kind of my opinion, my first impressions, and I wonder if you have the, the similar ones. So, uh, let's go into the games, have fun guys, and enjoy. So we are on the play, we have either extremely good draw, and it will be extremely good draw. We play non-basic, in case we hit another land that is, for example, non-basic, uh, this is a perfect target for this card. And we are playing against enchantment, it seems. Huh. Alright. Alright, interesting. Uh, I think I will... Uh, I think we will won. We should be having good matchup against this. Let's see the choice. Uh, it could be a multi... It, it could be Heliot, even. Alright. Ossification. Uh, probably not the best choice, in all honesty. And they will try to crack it, right? Do we draw a card to hit our lands, or with Faithful Absence to keep the board clear? I like the board clear, but I like cards even more. Especially... Oh boy, especially if you know you are not hitting those. And uh, probably Sunfall. Like, we will be slow. Uh, I did not expect I will whiff on the land. You know what? It's okay. Uh, in the end we did the right call because we would not hit land naturally for so long and even though it's tapped so I cannot make I wanted to play Celestus into Faithful Absence it ramps me, it gives me best plays but, you know, it is what it is man, I send for on the next turn, don't I? but he will draw some cards alright we will make him work for it 
He needs to work, he needs to play a creature, and then he needs one more attack. Oh, this, this is not a good play for him. Uh, extremely slow. And we will have the furry. So, uh, he has ossification, but taxes half of his turn, and he can remove only one the furry. It will be the big planeswalker, but what about the small one? He needs to play land into second ossification, and then he answers everything. And when we farewell at some point during the game, we get the full value. This is one damage, and suddenly he needs to give up the, the enchantment as well. And I is, I'm still left with the furry. Uh, I mean, I don't mind it. Yeah, I, I think we, we kind of absolutely nailed it. So if I play a land and play Celestus, I can still play the Emperor. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. And if something bad happens to the fur, like second ossification, we can just uh, draw cards or something, depending on what we want. And he can go for audacity, but he he will en you know enchant one of the creatures. Sure, you can draw cards. You are, like you, he is not winning in the value, so this is actually a wasted turn for him. He wants the stuff. Two choices. Uh, if we expect the instant removal, uh, it's better to minus two. I hope you're ready to lose. I don't think he has it. Honestly, they'd never play it. If they play it, show me, because they don't, and I think the priority is just crew. So of course we get better value than by minus two. The only downside was any kind of instant removal. Cool. Like he's investing so much in those ossifications, and in the end he's still left against planeswalker. And his board is actually worse than ours, which is an accomplishment. All right, so we can play this into into this if we want. So uh, the play, we start attacking with them with the tokens, and we absolutely do not need to do anything more. Uh, we draw a card, we discard a card. We don't need more lands. Like they are useful, but they are not the priority. And I think that the game will drag on for a moment. But I'm nearly certain we already won this at, at this point. I think when the fairy survived one turn, this is where we won. Alright, show me. Nothing. Cool. He's playing a weird version, very value based, but the problem is that it's not as high value to outvalue ours deck. So, what really is he doing? Cool. Like, he's drawing some cards, and that's basically it. Uh, we play Memory Rouge first, we see what we hit. Uh, the third wedding announcement, it's too good of a value. We could go for basic to play this one, but honestly, those are just better cards. Especially that the third is so cheap with Celestus, it's just two mana total. And uh, do I, man, I don't need cards. Hmm. I don't think we draw. Like, I, I cannot imagine any other card that I want right now, more than what I have. So, uh, let's go for the blue one. We play the furry. We go for plus one. Don't forget he used two of his planeswalker removal already. And let's get the lands back. Now we plus, so we keep the emperor. We attack, cause why not? Free damage. Now we go wedding announcement. And we get the token, and we have two blockers, two planeswalkers, wedding announcement, double the rouge in the graveyard, and he has, you know, this kind of stuff. I mean, he's definitely drawing cards, uh, but it will be hard. Like, he will scale that. Oh, the fair ossification is actually pretty good. I did not think he would draw it so quickly. Uh, so that messes just a little bit. But he's not going for planeswalkers. That's weird. Like, I would definitely target the Teferi. This is the high value target on the board. And then maybe I missed on the value. Uh, here I just block. And I get another token on the next turn and another samurai on the next turn. Like, frankly, I, I don't think that was the optimal play at all. 
All right, let's keep the spam going. I think how we win is Ultimate Teferi, because this, like, he has real troubles answering Planeswalker. After three ossifications, we can nearly guarantee that our Planeswalkers are not dying to a targeted removal. Uh, do I want to cast it? No, I would probably just, just sand for Yeah, especially with the second one. So we go for white. And uh, we cast a sample. The sun will fall. Great job. And at uh, first let's go Emperor. Now we go the furry. No creature. And the land. Yeah, there's no shenanigans with, uh, with the token yet. And we say go. We have board. Planeswalkers. Soon the fairy will ultimate. A stroke, of course, doesn't hit too much stuff, but they might play Hallowed Hunting, you know? Alright, this is an extremely slow card. I love it. Absolutely love it. So it helps him get this plan of playing Rite of Harmony and a lot of spells, because you need a lot of mana for this. But it's, it's not you know, extremely useful all around. Alright. So, uh, on the next turn we might memory the so let's see what we hit. Uh, honestly, getting rid of two lands is perfect, kinda. We can tap uh, this manually, and let's make a token. Yeah, we are starting to close the game slowly but surely. We make this. We play the second emperor. We play. the second emperor now fortunately the fairy is not a vampire artifact creature and the land man the fairy and the emperor is such an amazing combo <laughs> like you don't need to ask your opponent to tap the creature you will tap it for him and i mean we can attack with one creature and we get the anthem effect on the next one so it's closer and closer to closing the game they will get small Kirin, but it's severely outvalued on the board. And next turn, the fairy ultimates. And that's a big deal. Oh boy. <laughs> it would be such a shame. Such a shame if your whole turn was absolutely wasted in the most important turn. Yeah? You will draw cards whenever you play enchantments, so go on, play all of them. Like he gets it, uh, it comes in, enters the battlefield under your control, so he will get something, but it's definitely not the type of value he actually wanted. And yeah, I guess he can play one enchantment from his hand on top of you know the transformations. We still have the sunfall and memory deluge, so it's it's pretty brutal. And now we can start uh, like we can cast memory deluge, and then on his turn we untap fully. Thanks to the fairy ultimate, like this is the first thing we are doing. And yeah, I think this is the best game plan to just close because he can keep going forever like this, and we need to just, you know, make this huge blow that actually kills him. Uh, so, first, Memory the Rouge. Let's see what we hit. Uh, it should be something cool. Uh, smite is pretty good, right? Man, do we go for double smite? I, I cannot just resist it. Like it's a manual board clear basically. And we say go. We need to crank up the tempo. So he thinks he's getting good block. In reality he's getting the worst block. Number one. Number two. So this will be a pretty crazy turn for him. So he, he will probably flip the board again. Hopefully we can counter something. If not we just keep going with you know memory deluge and just at some point with farewell and clear everything. Good part about playing uh, farewell against this kind of deck, you actually have one-sided sweeper, because you don't name creatures, you name enchantments. That's, uh, that's a weird one. Show me. I expect he has something, right? Otherwise this uh, attack doesn't make much sense. A Gantra, I'm not sure. So he gets knight straight, but now the Emperor can minus two, uh, the Naturalis. So let's see how much he develops the board. Kami, sure. 
we probably have to cast this memory deluge and start hitting some serious answers. Farewell is the best one because it leaves him with four cards and nothing more. He has two mana for the crew, so he will crack it in response. So this will be farewell, right? Farewell. And I mean the fairy for just you know big power spike. And uh, that's probably the best one. So if we for war, we go enchantments. Uh, artifacts don't have doesn't have sense. We get back the fairy, and attack doesn't make any sense as well. All right, creatures enchantments. Those aren't enchantments, so we need to name them. And of course the gravers. So we get rid of all of this value. So it you know it's slower kill, but it's inevitable. Like, we just have stronger deck overall. Like, look, look how many cards this fur will absolutely destroy on his side. And now we have the furry that he needs to remove. Now we have Wandering Emperor, Samurais. Like, we have a lot of stuff all, all around. And still some control over the game, though Stroke won't hit too much. If he doesn't... Oh, Paragon! And Binding! Oh my god, we actually will hit something. He probably plays more than one. Alright. Six cards in total. And we untap. I probably missed some mana. I could untap. I forgot I have... Yep. Good. That's the step one. Now if he plays another hunting, uh, he has only two mana, so we can overwhelm him. And you see, this kinda was over for a long, long time, but he, he tried. Just not enough value in the deck. All right, guys. One of those games. We take it. We absolutely get land from the top and we win. That's the plan. Our hand is extremely good as long as we hit a single land. And Kumano faces Kakazan. Wow, what a fresh standard. I have never seen it before. <laughs> but we are in the game because we were on the play. So we have Faithful Absence, hopefully. Oh, Gruul. So this would be a full haste creature thing. And unfortunately for him, uh, which I don't feel very bad about, and this is the perfect target for Faithful Absence, and I mean, you know what you need to do against Monorad, just be on the play, spam the board with Wedding Announcement tokens, and see them in true despair. You don't need black color for this one. Squee, annoying, what can you do? Uh, we need to wait until we flip. Oh, this is bad, but this will be a lot of damage during the game. We need to we need to keep blocking, man. I mean, <laughs> we might not block on this turn because the token won't attack on on the next one. So uh, this will be ex this will be the worst turn. Let's see how bad it gets. You know what? It's not the worst. We do not block, and uh, we take some damage on the next turn as well. I hope he cracks the clue. You know what? As good as it gets. <laughs> as good as it gets. Uh, Celestus, he might kill one of the tokens with burn spread then step. Uh, fortunately, we will start to have a live game. Of course, we do not attack. Absolutely, we need those tokens because we are dead otherwise. 8-8. The problem uh, with this situation is that I, we want to wait one more turn, so everything will be a 3-3. But guess what? We won't be able to. Alright, so he draws a card. That's that's kinda good. It makes the game longer with the gas, but it lowers the board power he has for this particular turn. Like, he could cast Lightning Strike at the end step, so then our blocks would be worse. Especially if they follow up with High Creature or something. You know what? I'll take it. Just give me, you know, the pop rate from the top and we are friends, Shuffler. We also get some extra mana, we have the fairy with Celestus, and that can be a lot of life gain every turn. We also activate Emperor, so honestly, if he doesn't attack, I think it's over for him. Now the question, do we want the life gain or the Emperor? You know the answer. The best 4-drop is still here. We're at 8, we cycle cards. And honestly, it will be Memory Deluge, probably. Let's see the card. Oh, yes. Oh, it feels so good when you hit this kind of stuff. I don't think we'll play this. If we go for the draw or like win config, it will be just pure Teferi. 
Vigilance menace. I hate you, thank you. But you know oh <laughs> the swing. The absolute monster swing. And honestly this is a good call by him because this is the last turn when he will be playing Magic the Gathering. We know the target. Please go away. He will get some cards with Felden probably. Unless we go through. Like maybe one of the creatures I will go through. Double block. Oh boy. So he can get it to 8-8. Eight, eight. So it means triple block. That's bad. So we get hit for 4. He needs to pay all the mana or he doesn't kill the tokens. And then we try to get the fairy to start life gaining. I mean, it's okay plan, right? We need to invest two tokens, so I, we might as well invest the third one. Four damage to the face should not be the worst, and we have good traits except this. If he tries to buff it... Oh, hi. It has more abilities than one. Uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Three oil counters. I actually never seen it used. Uh, very, very good play by our opponent. Man, I'm impressed, an aggro deck that knows cards, and you know, to be fair, they know this card better than we do. Uh, what were the traits? You know what? Still not great. I actually didn't do the math which one is better, I just assumed if he did it, it was better. I'm not super sure right now. Alright, so what is the play? Absolutely the Teferi on Celestus. We add blue, because we don't have too much blue. And oh boy! <laughs> oh boy. Do you want to see the weirdest? No, like he won't go for it, right? Or so this cannot block. Never mind, I'll tell you in a second what I had in mind. Oh, it cannot block. I mean, we don't have much of a choice. So we have three mana open. It means negate into smite. That's pretty good. Do we want the token for instant power or we believe we can survive? We have this. We have the fairy. We need to survive. That's Until it. Next time, then. I would love to double spell. So my plan, all right? My plan was that I untap his Feldon, attack, he blocks, and then I Elspeth smite and go, haha, I double spell, so I switch the day night time and it's great. Uh, but Feldon cannot block and I don't really want to attack because my, like if he's smart and so far he was really smart by the place, uh, I mean he won't block because 20 or 18 life doesn't make any difference and it's obvious that we have something if we play like this. So this will be a smite. What are non-creature cards in his deck? So far nothing. So I think Samurai is a decent value and I also flip. I like flipping. Do I want to draw the card? Sure. You know what? You won't believe me, but I actually was thinking, what about if I hit the Populate? And I thought, ah, I don't need to think about it. I guess I do. I guess I do. And we have uh, this Teferi. I don't think we need this Teferi. Like, we're at 10. With this, with this guy, we can heal so much, and it can also draw cards. We don't need more value against this lousy weak deck. They really wanted that, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, that's the right call. Unfortunately, my friend. Unfortunately. So, we go like this. However, the question, do we depopulate this board? You know what? He's really into killing our wedding announcements and it ramps us. That means a depopulate into the furry uh, absolutely destroying uh, his chance of winning the game. I will take an island. I don't have anything else that I can take, right? Ex except the planes, of course. So this doesn't kill the fairy. That's all I need to know. It does not kill the fairy. Man, I told you, the fairy Celestus is just the deadliest combo. The reason I did it so this way, this deals damage. It means Feldon gets three cards and he uses one of those. Uh, and on the empty hand, it's like a dream for him, so we are definitely not helping him this way. Uh, let's go for the blue mana to scare him. And we go into the night time. 
on the next turn. And as you can see, like they cannot beat Celestus into Teferi gaining 3 life a turn. Potentially 3. He didn't even know that we had Dancer all along. I mean, Mono Red just got smart. It was a Mono Red just with green, alright? Alright, man. What's up with those two landers? Because it's getting annoying. I don't think it's it's a good hand. Even against Mono Red, like having four sweepers and two lands, it's, it's just bad, man. I guess I'm destined to have two lands in this game. Thank you, Shuffler. Uh, I mean, uh, it's not like we have a choice. It will be tapped one way or, the, or another. And that's another Mono Red in a row. Honestly, this is a third Mono Red in a row on the third game we're playing. Do you see the pattern? Because I certainly have have my suspicion what's going on. Wow, what a never seen before strategy. Uh, the question is, do we go? Let's see the attack, of course. But they never hesitate, and honestly, they should not. Uh, do we go for the sandfall? I mean, I'm not leaving to see the sandfall in this game, so I might as well, right? Like, if we don't exile it, we are not getting to 5 mana at this rate. Uh, maybe I like, maybe we go on 5 mana on the next turn. <laughs> Went quickly. Uh, Celestus is amazing here because we can get rid of the stroke, but... I'm starting to regret some Sunfall decisions. So, this way we cycle, we get life. I mean, the game is not over, especially that Ember is a good stuff, you know? But how do we deal with it? The first Emperor goes to Fel, like he knows what the stuff is. We, we have been playing the same game since basically a year right now. So they know that we have Emperor, we know they know, and we still play it, and they play it. You, you know, you've been there. Uh, I would love to minus one and block the Swift Spear, but then he plays play with fire, and this is absolute blowout. So we have to play like this instead. That went quick. Sad to see is it possible he actually does not have a single instant in this hand? It seems like it, doesn't it? Oh, because it's a stranger. So I, I missed a good block, but honestly it was not a good decision. I don't think I should go... I, I should even try it. We could go for this. Uh, if we hit double basic, we discard one of them, we play the second one, and we fight full absence, we switch to daytime, we get life, it's fun. Uh, it's extremely unlikely. So, we say go. Uh, hopefully he did... Wow. High quality. Oh boy, here we go again. So what do we do? Uh, Faithful Absence seems kinda good, in, but it doesn't provide too much. If he attacks with Raiju, yeah, we exile it, but this will become a 2-2 forever. I guess I get a creature. Ah, oh, well, let's get on with it. You know, there's still fourth... Wow, that, this, I don't think it's a good one. Like, why not cheek? Alright, let's get rid of the big one. Uh, you know, we need to make place for a fourth monoret in a row. There's still room for improvement, <laughs> I guess. Alright, we, we can be tricky here. And we like being tricky. We are at 14, so we can... We have some lanes, you know? Show them how we because they are greedy. And if they want to kill the Emperor, they need to attack with... Bro, chill the hell out. This is absolute blowout to my plan. And now I'm just behind. Because he's so good at drawing best cards of... This is literally the best card of his deck. Second one is probably draw two from the Exile, and I'm not sure if he even plays it. Um, the whole plan was that he cannot kill the Emperor, because we can remove this when he attacks. But doesn't matter, right? Anyway, uh, hopefully we can double spell. Celestus is at the draw. It's not like we are casting for war, right? Are we casting for war? No, it will be war than if, if we have this mana. Um, Negate is okay. Not super sure about this choice, you know. I could see Farewell being better, but he probably cracks the clue before. 
He has only two cards. I don't know. It's hard to judge. Usually when you play the ward and you get instant card draw, you get a great blocker, you know. All this good stuff, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Extremely innovative play right there from our friend Talos uh, with his deck of choice. Alright, we have the we have the Sanctuary Warden. I mean that's good, right? We can also jump block the Swift Spear and then we get to start uh, you know earning some value and this is this is a decent draw. I think we should be winning this one, but honestly I'm not sure, it all depends on the cards. Uh, I guess yeah, cool. I mean, we are not technically dead, right? So we should not scoop yet, but we are probably dead. Oh my god, this is what happens when mono red player actually has a card that that has some abilities. Like, look how confused they seem. What I'm clicking? What's going on? I, I, I just never played Magic before. Oh, uh, and I'm salty, man. Not by losing, but by seeing three mono red decks in a row. Like, moment we are trying to enjoy the new standard, like, it's like kick in the face, man. <laughs> like, no joke. So we'll try to double spell on this turn. And now the question, would farewell be bad? Wow, that's some quality draws. Uh, if we play this, we get some more life, but then we don't memory the rush. Uh, we double spell, so we get the life anyway. I see. I see. That was some game winning memory rush. It's not like it changed much. We probably die whatever we draw because we are tapped for one turn. And this is a good draw. This could win us the game if we drew it, you know, before. Like three uh, life turn is extreme high amount. Running. I actually didn't see the skin. This is kind of cool. Wow. Wow, such innovative gameplay. I'm loving the new standard. <laughs> Alright guys, we are joking, but it's, it's kind of lame that we just see Mono Red. Alright guys, one of those games. It aethers goes really well, or absolutely horrible, <laughs> because we have draw on, car on turn 3, so we just need to hit one land, probably the base. Is everyone only playing Mono Red now? Welcome to the new standard, I guess. That's so joyful and happy. Alright, so we have a lot of cards to exile. We can even double remove, but we probably won't. It's, I don't think it will be worth it. So, and, uh, wow, wow, such a fresh gameplay. I have never seen this play pattern before. Uh, Sia, this is why we play four of those, exactly, because we know what, what the thing is about. Uh, let's see if we just lost the game, and we lost. Cool. Uh, I'm, yeah, a very, very fresh experience right there, never seen before. Uh, I, I'm just joking, but it is kind of lame. You have to admit, it is kind of lame. So let's go for three. Uh, what is the card? Probably Sanctuary. Can you imagine playing six drop in standard? It's so slow. Uh, so, very unfortunate because Squee has very bad stats for the cost, but the cost is, you know, legit. Uh, however, we are somehow still in this game. And man, we are actually on... No, we were on the play, right? Yeah, we missed the land drop, so that's why. That's the reason. On the draw it would be much harder. Ferdon is here, but we have just one more land for the Emperor. Uh, so we do not block, we take with some dignity, not too much, uh, our 3 damage for the turn. You know what? You get to respect a mono red player that actually notices you have a board. Like, it doesn't get better than this, honestly. <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, you'll get half a pass for this game, pro TMTGA. Uh, I mean, that's definitely a card I would prefer to not see on the board. Huh. That's a weird one. And I think I know what to do. That's a, that's a smart choice. Okay, more or less obvious, but still, you know, you can make mistakes here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So, that's probably wedding announcement. I did it because I have to hit a land for the next turn or I'm dead. Because my whole play is to not block anything, not trade, not go for the Emperor, not get single value. Because I'm getting full value next turn. 
If I don't hit it, I'm out of the game instantly. Wandering Emperor. Yeah, Wandering Emperor is good and you can still get similar to Wedding Announcement a lot of value. Sure. So we get three more three more life, but uh, worse token. Of course we top dig the land. Easy. Man, uh, we get still the token from Wedding Announcement. I actually missed it. And that's pretty huge. Having this tutu and not having this tutu? Are we in the pinnacle of new standard? I mean, everything just a fresh new card that you literally didn't see for last year. Let's uh, see. It's so funny because we are playing actually mono red decks in a row. And I've been reading some, let's, you know, forums, Reddit, and there are some users just saying, is it me or everyone is playing aggro? I mean, not you. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. But you know what? This is that good point about Invoke Despair. Like, I don't play counter spells because Invoke Despair decks, I mean, you do realize that we have this thing, right? I'm sure you did not mess it, my mono red player. Oh, it seems that maybe you did mess it. <laughs> he, they actually missed it. Oh boy, so Samurais are really good with Wedding Announcement because it gives them very quick clock. And you know that our top decks will suck because we are not an aggro deck, so we need to play like this. I'm attacking with this one even without the Vigilance. Two creatures, like, if he gets three haste creatures, like, you live with it. On eight it doesn't kill you even, and there's really low chance he gets all of them. Oh, you wish you had the Wedding Announcement. Alright, what this does? Gain control until end of turn, right? Untap, it gains haste. He creates a treasure. That's crazy, bro. Enjoy your treasure. We are not blocking because we are getting our stuff back. And he's out. <laughs> he has one top deck to deal 6 damage against our superior board. I mean, we are smoking Monoret all day, all, you know, all night. I mean, I'm happy with it. Great. High quality content. Let's go and add. <laughs> I mean, never seen before, right?